Hey. 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 It works. <laughs> Wait a minute, I got to turn. Colby, get closer to the mic. Yeah, call me. It works. <laughs> I hope what? that didn't hurt anyone's ears. I tend to have a very shrilly voice. <laughs> it sounds good now. I, you know, you sound. It's, you you know, sound it's a, good. You look yeah, good. the show. You know, your shot and the sound is getting better every week. And um, I, did you see my introduction? Did you no. see the? Oh, no. uh, you know what? You got to see it. This was my. This was my intro here. Okay. Ooh. I love it. That's very creepy, crawly. I love it. Yeah. So we went. We, you know, wolves. we went for it, and um, you know, and we, I, and I have, uh, I have all the things. That... Happy Halloween week. I know. Yes, it is Happy Halloween. Halloween. We had a great Halloween party last uh, last year. Yeah, everybody and dressed up. You guys are invited to this one. It won't be Halloween. It'll be Friday night. Yep. So. Uh, yeah, and uh, dress up. Yeah. Dress so up. this now, Colby, you finally get to. You know, you you remember. Oh, I could use the costume. Uh, <laughs> don't, don't, don't give it away. <laughs> don't give it away. But yes, so the costume party is Friday night. Okay. Last year, Steve uh -huh. was Robin Xander. <laughs> yeah, last year I was Robin Xander. Um, I might be Robin Xander again. I don't You're know. You're gonna be Slash. Oh well, you know what? We'll, we'll see. I got. I got to go through my uh, wardrobe. It was funny though. He had yep. long blonde hair. Yeah, it was good. It was fun. It was fun. You could impersonate a famous drummer and probably get away with it. Yeah. Maybe. 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 <laughs> maybe the most. I, ha I have the props. <laughs> yeah, you do. So, um, I'm very excited about your episode tonight because we have um, not told people what it is yeah we did. we did we said it was lichens and 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 werewolves and all that yeah but it's going to be so much more than that well, so bring much it. bring it bring it master brad <laughs> well Scared, brad. Okay. well first off i really like wolves okay this is a thing and colby made me make sure that this was the halloween edition of what we're doing and yeah. then we yes, and, and bravo colby yes, colby and, and then we found out that you, my friend, are a big werewolf kind of guy. Well, not only am I a werewolf kind of guy, but our dog has wolf in him, actually legitimately red wolf, um, red wolf uh, wow. because uh, when the, who came over and it wasn't uh, the, 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 the Spanish, Spanish, I think it was when the conquistadors or somebody came over and they brought um dogs with them Louisiana. They, they they brought uh, <laughs> uh come on boucherons and what was the other thing greyhounds, greyhounds right. and they right made the red wolf. and they made it with the red wolf as legend has it and that's where the catahoula leopard dog uh came from so it's now the wow. state dog of louisiana mm -hmm. so yeah it was yeah. catahoula parish yeah from catahoula parish but i say let's get this party started Yes. Bring it. You know, Bring we, it we started off with um, werewolves and lichens. And first of all, it's a weird name, lichen. Where the heck did that come from? I we don't know, because I'm not liking them very much. <laughs> I know, exactly. I'm not liking it at all. Well, it goes back approximately 5th, maybe 6th century BC. That's wow. a long time ago. And, oh, by the way, this is from, I cracked open one of my favorite books. This is from... This is actually a picture that was done in the 15th, 16th century of All Hallows Eve. And I thought it looked good and creepy. You can see all the imagery floating through there. Is there a way to make it larger or how does it look on your end? Here. I, I, made, I made it larger. I made it larger. Beautiful. Okay. Thank you. you can see like this whole very detailed scene of being, people being either dragged down or pulled up to the sky. And it was this immense treasure trove of information. But here we are in my favorite book. And here is this picture that is called Animan. And that is- Animan? Animan. I thought that looks, man. Like my old, looks like my old manager, but okay. <laughs> I know. He definitely looks like a rocker. There's no doubt. He's got your hair, Steve. See? He does. So then maybe I'm safe. <laughs> so here we go. Anna Man. Anna Man. And it goes back 
here we go, around fifth century BC. This is a image of a, what's called a woodcut. That's where they carved into wood and they stamped it out. And this woodcut is showing on the far left hand, uh, the far right hand corner, pardon me, I'm lopsided here. You actually have a picture of what was to be Zeus. And then you have on the other side, this werewolf looking creature running away. Well, that werewolf creature running away is King Lyconus, Lycanus. He was a horrible, horrible king that had 50 boy, 50 sons, and busy guy. very busy guy. And busy some guy. say he tried to lure Zeus into eating one of his children. Oh, if Zeus would have eaten one of his children, Zeus would have lost or had his powers greatly altered because of this feat. And when Zeus was about to take a bite of this, he realized something was a foul. And when he realized that this jackass tried to feed him a, a, a person, he got so angry, he turned King Lycanus into a werewolf, a lichen. And you can see, you know, him running away from the table. He was, he was destined to be this animal wolf for the rest of his life. And all of his children were killed by lightning bolts from Zeus. Oh, wow. Well, you didn't want to piss Zeus well, off. Minute, no, I'm not thinking you wanted to piss Zeus off at all. Really, but especially. But he didn't want to eat the guy, but he wanted to kill. He killed the other 49 kids. I mean, it had, nothing to, do with, weird. had <laughs> nothing to do with the children. Had to do with stopping out the problem. And that Zeus is. took matters into his own hands. And from this was born lichen. Any person that turns into an animal had this lycanthropy, which is actually the study of or the disease of a person having animalistic craven desires to either have cannibalism or have some type of horrible behavior that is unacceptable to the human race. Well, now that's called a rock band. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, and, well, I mean, I, there's, there's only so many jokes I can make about that because well, it's a little too close to the truth. Last what? night we were watching the Roman Empire and Nero said... Right. Um, what, what did he do? He said uh, the, the prisoners to the lions and the and the wild yeah, animals. Yeah, because meat was too expensive. So he spent, they yeah. took the gladiatorial remains and gave them, you know, and... No, the prisoners. He, he fed the prisoners. Oh, the prisoners. All right, well, to the uh, wild animals. And that's, I mean, this is 600 B.C.? Approximately, yeah. Was it in Rome? So that was back... <laughs> Greece. <laughs> right, because I was going to say, we just watched the part where the Persians... Uh, tried to take over Greece, yeah. and right. uh, yeah, so the but those names are hard. I mean, you know, oh, yeah. Caesar oh, Augustus, Tiberius, all that stuff's easy. But Flagamaginus and <laughs> Jogalovinos. <laughs> what was interesting is as we travel through time, the Greeks were not the only ones that had this strict belief of a person turning into an animal momentarily to do horrible things and then turn back to their own self afterwards. This is an image from Norse mythology around eight to 10th century AD. And the, the guy on the, uh, I think, God, I keep on getting messed up. When there are two characters here, the guy on the left, the one with the really big stick here, this one, mm -hmm. Oh, right. God. Okay, the one that yeah. looks like, not the guy with the horns, but the other guy? Yeah. Not the one with the horns. Yeah, the other guy. He had an interesting name. He was what was called a berserker. <laughs> exactly. The name berserk comes from this guy. Wow. The really? Berserker, the berserker clan were the really tough and tumble Vikings that would take a variety of, we'll call it a peyote type drug and get into an entranced state and fight and fight and fight for hours and hours in a trance that was just craven. And they would wind up, they sent these guys into townships to wipe everyone out first. 
and then they would bring in the second string quarterback. And and what and what period was this? I'm sorry. Eight to tenth century. And they were like wow. shapeshifters. They were shapeshifters. A.D. Uh, well, they would call them shapeshifters, um, but we've got kind of like bath salts. Yes, kind of <laughs> like bath salts today. <laughs> when people take the drug and they go, actually, f nuts, lose their junk, and they and, and when they come down, they're not the same person. Does she grow up in yeah. Miami? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, <laughs> Miami girl. Uh, hey, I can't help what I know. <laughs> hey, listen, you know, listen, we're glad you know it, and we're also glad you're on our side. <laughs> right, exactly. Sure. We don't want you going berserk on no, us. No, 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 we don't like that. So, but the berserkers were known for either putting on a uh, wolf body or wolf skins and wolf hats or bear skins and bear hats. So wolf and bear would be real synonymous for this particular group of- So hence the fur. Right. Okay. So now we're gonna go up to 1589. What happened in 1589? Well, one of the most famous, if not the most famous werewolf story ever. I know it's kind of a mess, it's but so we're gonna talk. It. It's like one of those things on, on Facebook when they put in, they ask you to see if you can find three people in a cat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> this, is, this is a lovely scene of a woman finding that all of her family had been dismembered by this lovely creature on the bottom, oh. who his name was Peter Stump. And it, it, the truth is his name was not Stump, but they chopped his hand off, which gave him stump. a stump. <laughs> and they, they, he was put on trial. In fact, it was considered to be the most gruesome trial of that era. Is this for real? Yes, yeah, for real. Okay, this is for real. Now, okay. he claimed that he summoned the devil and put on a magic belt that allowed him to change into a werewolf. Oh. They never, they never found said belt, but they did find a, a, a heap of mess of people that he left behind. Wow. And he was nuts. And they, when they tried him, of course, they did a wonder, wonderful filleting and dismembering and they quartered his body and it was just a whole mess that they put him through. But what was interesting is it really was more of a political statement. And I know you're saying, well, how could this be a political statement? Well, in 1589, in Germany, in Switzerland, and in France, wolves were running rampant. And they had to do, quote unquote, control the population of them. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, they had to make the wolf an enemy in order to get this done. Oh. And throughout time, wolves have been targeted over and over. And this was really an exclamation point of how they handled the business. And they mounted um, an enormous onslaught. And what they used was silver bullets to kill the wolves. Because one of the Roman Catholic higher ups at the time felt that this was needed to be done. So they melted down some silver and they blessed it in holy water, and they said, let's try this one. And they started using silver bullets. That's where we get the term. Wow. 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 Yeah, it, it, it was pretty heavy. And, you know, wow. I, I again, I like wolves, so this I take a front. They're really important for our ecosystem. Yeah, so yeah. You know, but how do we get this in rock and roll? I mean, like, because this is a pretty far jump from dismembering people to rock and roll, although you may disagree. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, you've heard of roadies. Or so, oh, yeah. <laughs> agents. We agents, yeah, agents. Yeah, this <laughs> agents. We were talking about those the other night, and they were dismemberable. That's another story. <laughs> but, crowbars. Yeah, those are. Yeah, they were nuts. The agents, and especially in Jersey, the New yeah. Jersey agents were out of their minds. I mean, they. But I digress, please. Okay. Okay, so, this is incredible. So before there was rock and roll or before the twilight days of rock and roll, we had this guy, Howlin' Wolf. Howlin' so Wolf, yeah. yeah. This guy, if you haven't heard him, who, I mean, I know you have, but there are other people that may not know him as well as you. You gotta listen to him. This guy, 
he had this gruff, aggressive, uh, what was the other song he had? I'm your backdoor man. I mean, yeah. he meant business, totally meant business. And then that led straight to one of my absolute favorite characters in rock and roll, beginning, middle, and end, Wolfman Jack. Right. Right. Hey, baby, it's Wolfman Jack. Hey. Yeah. You know, when, when I was a kid, I remember seeing American Graffiti, and he just had this presence of an incredible badass. I just loved him. He, you know, like everything he said was cool. He knew what was cool. He brought it home and he had that wolf man Jack about him. Cool. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Yeah. yeah what, I get you know, that. How, did he, how did he get the name? Does anyone know? I'm sure you might. Wolfman Jack. I, I really don't, but we could. We Maybe could, because he's kind of hairy. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I could be. I don't know. No Wolfman Google Jack. Google. No Googleizing. Yes, a no Googleizing. All right, we'll let it well, down. Then how are we supposed to know? Well, you can go ahead. Okay. All right, Laurie, you find out. Yeah, please I'll find out. out. And in the meantime, we're going to travel a little further to one of, I, I know everyone's going to love this. Oh. Warren Zevon, Werewolves of London. His hair was perfect. His hair was perfect. You know, I'd like to meet his tailor. Okay, I know. Wait, wait, wait. I know but, how he got his name. Oh. Wow. Okay. Because back when he was a disc jockey, yeah, they disc jockey took some names like Moon Dog or Hound Dog, and Wolfman Jack enjoyed horror movies, so he called himself Wolfman. So oh. there you go. Well, and that's true about the DJs. They always had, uh, you know, as traditionally you, you remember. I mean, Cousin Brucey's not such a sinister name, but, no, but they all had handles like that. Yeah. So it makes sense, Wolfman Jack. Love it. Love and it. why, I, you know, why uh, Werewolves of London? Is that where they were supposed to have? Uh... Yeah. So, wait, this is from the movie uh, that was done in 1935 called Werewolves of London. And it was about, oh. and, and the storyline was actually really good. It, it, in fact, it was a trend setting movie in 1935 because it had special effects and it went into this whole occult philosophy of this magic potion that could turn per a person into a wolf and it actually was a great movie and, and Warren Zevon was greatly inspired by this and that's why after he saw the movie he instantly wrote that song in like 35 minutes that's amazing you saw that movie. yeah no we didn't see that movie what movie did we see with the werewolf where are they uh... that was um I know what you're talking about that was uh yeah, like uh, off. oh man it was what was it say again Jekyll High no, no, no. It was the one with the guy who keeps coming back to see his friend. Was, Griffin Dunn, I think, was the, was dead. They it was him and his friend. I can't remember. And and they got attacked on the moors. You know, they were doing the backpack thing through England. And right. and uh yeah, I can't remember what the name of it was, but it was a freaky. So, that was freaky. It was. So, so interestingly enough, about a decade American after werewolf. Werewolf. American Werewolf in, in London. London. Oh, so you jumped ahead of the class. So a, about a decade later, a decade later, we have Ozzy's Bark at the Moon. So yes. here's, the, here's the coincidence of, of a circle. Uh, the the um, movie in 1984, I believe it was, American Werewolf in London, which is a reprisal of the 1935 movie, Werewolves of London. The person who did the makeup on Ozzy as this Animan wolf character here that you see is the same person who did the uh, makeup for Werewolves of London in um, uh, the, the Landis film that was done in 84. Wow. wow. Yeah, there was no Photoshop back then. No. That's kind of obscure, Dad. I, I think it would be obscure. <laughs> Amazing. But, but you know, this bark at the moon, I, honestly, when that came out, uh, Johnny Lee on, on the guitar, um, you know, he that was his, you know, real call to arms because, you know, it was right after Randy Rowe died and Ozzy was looking for that new guitarist. They came out with that new guitarist. And let's face it, this, you know, to this day, there's a lot of controversy if Johnny Lee actually wrote part of that song but he certainly kicked the ass out of it on the guitar solo 
Well, you know, listen, you and I had a, a an off the record conversation about yeah. people right taking credit for other people's songs. So mm -hmm. we know about that. We know something about. But can you just go back to the picture before this? Because I made a very interesting observation. The, the, does he have the same color eyes as I do? I think so. <laughs> it looks like it. Yeah. Oh, you know, wow. I hate to say this. We're going to have to screenshot that. And put it <laughs> I can do that. Hang on, I'll he do it. Looks like here, a, a, wait, wait, wait! No, I gotta, go, I gotta go for the screenshot here. Uh, one second. Here we go. And and his hair was perfect. I love it. <laughs> I get it. I got it. I got it. Okay, we're good. So today we're going shopping in the grocer's aisle, and I noticed one of our one of our friends, Jason. He's wearing this. This oh. awesome. Lone wolf pendant with a crescent moon. And I said, you know, I got to take a picture of that and show everybody. Yeah. Who was wearing that? It's from Jason. Uh, oh, Jason? At, yeah, at, at, uh, at the health food store. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. And he had uh, a lot of tattoos. It, oddly enough, all that, of them that we've done. That we've done. The on, he had the on, he had the eye of Isis. Isis. Yeah, he was. He hit like everything that we've done so far. Our skull, it was great. Wow. I'll tell you, I, I, you know, when we were watching this Roman thing, I told you how many times the Zos, oh, our, our, our wolf is barking. <laughs> our wolf is in the he background. He probably sees a cat. He probably sees, yeah, he probably sees a cat. Oh, probably sees a lion. Better check him out. I'll watch out for my uh, energy field. Um, hey. He'll come in and howl for you in a minute. I was going to say, I, I think we may need to, well, you know, that, Kind of brings us to another lone wolf. Look at this beautiful picture. Oh, wow. You know, I played a gig, an outdoor festival, <clears throat> and behind the stage, there was a chain link fence. And wolves, I, you know, it was way before cell phones, or I, or I would have taken pictures. Like a half a dozen wolves came up to the fence, and it was just there incredible i mean i i love them i i you know they're they're great and and beautiful uh but they were just until you really are next to one like for real you know it's like a big dog but it's not like a big dog i have a big dog and you know he's not uh they're they're just incredible yeah in, in fact in, in in native american cultures uh the the wolf you know, is a common reoccurring theme. The, the wolf clan is like the hunter, the hunter clans. And my mom actually, may she rest her soul, many years ago, bought me this. I want to share it with you guys because it's special. Yeah. This is actually from an Alaskan tribe. And this is from their wolf clan. I want you to take a look how incredible. This actually has a wolf jaw. And on this side, I don't know if you can see it. See, it says Alaska. And then right here, there is an embossment of a wolf right there. Yeah, we, we can see that because what when, when uh, you know, I turn my mic off and go to the other view. But yeah, you can see that. Wow. And your mom got that for you? Yeah, well, I, I collect knives. And uh, well, one of the things I collect. And this one is just so special because it was, it's a skinning knife and it, it has, it, even though it's as, it apparently as impractical as it can be, it fits in the hand so comfortably. It actually is an incredible working tool. And no uh, animals were harmed in the making of that knife. They got it from. No, 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 no. When it comes to the, the native, the, the native culture, it, this is something that was left behind, and they yeah. just utilize it. There's no reason to to, right. to waste an animal for that. That's uh, the way it should be. Yeah, yeah. as it should be. That yeah. Is the way it and, should be. In fact, when it comes to wisdom, this was a quote that was powerful for me. For I thought everyone should see. There was a time when man could communicate with all animals, but we have since forgotten their language. This is a, a very famous native quote. And I think it's something we need to remember, you know, just because we're scared of something doesn't make it bad or evil. It means it's That's misunderstood. Right. That's right. 
Well, uh, you know, it's very funny because, you know, we talked about our mutual learning past. And the one thing that I was taught was that we really know a lot more when we're born and we unlearn a lot of it yes. throughout, throughout our growth. And they, they say the two most important days in your life are the day that you're born and the day that you find out why. So <laughs> that's very true. And this moon with two wolves is a symbol um, in many Native, in Native American cultures, if not all of them, but I don't want to assume all believe the same, but pretty much this is thematic. The story of two wolves is typically Cherokee, and it's typically taught in two versions. Version one, about a grandfather and a grandson meeting up and having a conversation about someone who had done wrong to the child. And he was complaining to the grandfather. And the grandfather said, I have been also wronged in my life where people have taken things that don't belong to them and have disgra you know, disgraced our earth for no reason and have had many losses. So I understand your pain. But with that pain, there are two wolves in my heart that feel this way. One is, a, is the nurturing soul of a good wolf that will help us. And the other one is ferocious and can tear things apart and can sometimes do horrible things. Which one will win, the, the, the grandson says. And version one says, the one I feed. The good side or the bad side, whatever wow. I feed will win out. But wow. then version two says, eventually I must feed both though, because the wolf that has this you know, ability to be fierce and cunning. If we don't respect it and feed it and treat it with respect, it will constantly hunt the other wolf and wait for that moment for that other wolf to be weak. And at some point it might be, and it will take advantage of that situation. So in other words, to harmonize both wolves in your heart is really the goal of the tribe. Well, I, you know, I don't, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. And that really is, you know, it's a profound statement of the wolf. Well, you know, there's a, and it's funny. I mean, I certainly don't meet, want to uh, cloud the ancient traditions, but I don't know if you've ever seen that, uh, that Star Trek where Kirk comes back through the um, transporter and there's like the good Kirk and the evil Kirk. Right. And one of them, you know, can't do any bad and he's weak and kind of like this. Right. And the evil Kirk is, you know, he's real evil. And at the end of the episode, they realize they need each other yeah. in order to survive. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I get that. Sure. They probably no. knew the story. And, 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 you know, one of the things, you know, in searching this week about wolf, werewolves and the culture of wolves themselves is my favorite thing is the how. I don't know, I told you this morning, when I was a little kid, my sister used to tell me that I would howl at the moon. And I just, I thought it was hysterical, but I guess I was a strange kid. And I- a strange adult. I, I, I am a strange adult. <laughs> but in trying to find out more about the, the howling of the wolf, there is, a, there is a language amongst them. They can, their voice can be heard to them miles away past vibrational tones that we can hear. And sometimes a single wolf can be in danger by the other packs because if they don't like a neighboring wolf, they may hurt him or they may pick him up to help him out or her out. Or the, the, the single wolf, when he or she makes that, that, that wolf cry, it's for them to, to signify that this is their space and this is where they make their stand. And then we have multiple wolves. When multiple wolves do the howling, like, check this guy, check these guys out. You just we have a pack like that doing what they do. They all sound different. In fact, so different that each howl of each voice is distinct unto them own. And if it's heard once and bonded with another wolf, that other wolf will remember that tone their entire life. And well, you know, I, 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 had a, I had a similar experience to that. I mean, I, I think dogs are very, obviously very close. You know, that's, that's the closest that, that it can be. Oh, thank you. Um, 
but um, when when uh, when I would go to England, um, there the property I went, there were like tons of dogs, uh, like nine Rottweilers and and big wolfhounds and all that stuff, and and labs. And labs. But the but the Rottweilers, once they had smelled you on the property, they remembered your scent forever, and you never had to worry about them attacking you. So wow. that's awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. And so I guess. Does that, oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say, you know, I, I sent you a little video earlier today. Okay. And, uh, is it time? I think it's time. Okay. Aww. Aww. Oh. <laughs> I'm afraid my dog is going to come in here and flip out. Uh, That's what 25 wolves sound like. Yeah, 25 wolves. Yeah. And I don't know if the fidelity came across, but you can hear that there are others far away. I mean, it's so, that's bizarre. And what's interesting is wolves, when they are in a small pack, let's say they're like in three or four in a pack, they will time their wolf intro and exit in a way where you cannot tell how many wolves there are really? to, to sometimes to, to cheat and say, Hey, we could have 50 wolves. You don't know. Cause we're a big pack. We just fight big. Uh, and that, that psychological, I mean, there's so much depth and you know, and that's what I wanted to kind of make everyone understand that this, this month of Rocktober, I say, howl at your dogs and have a great time. We're so oh. glad to be part of the road. Oh. Oh. Everyone at home should do this too. That's right. And very yeah. cleansing. Very it cleansing. <laughs> do it again. Oh. 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 I love oh. That. Hey, <laughs> did you say your dog can howl? Oh hell yeah, hey, Remy. 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 Let's see if we can get him to you come in and take part. Right? Yeah. Come here, Ram. Of he, course, one yep, of our yeah. cat lover, lovers is going meow. <laughs> yeah. Will be a brat of cat lovers. Uh, oh, is he here? Oh, he's here. Oh, oh, come here. I need you to howl. I need you to howl. Come on now. Oh, In the jungle. <laughs> Red Wolf, yeah. So, yeah. I, I, I have no more words. I think that 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 was really the best it can get. That's a good way to. <laughs> uh, that's a good way to close out. I gotta tell. You. So, um, listen. <laughs> a, he's uh, he's wagging. He's all happy. He heard his friends. You know, so he knows. He, right. What a great time. Yeah. Oh, he's a good boy. Wait, I, you'll have to meet him soon. Yeah.
I yeah. can't wait. Anymore. I met him the other day in the car. That's right. Oh, oh that's right. That's right. Uh -huh. That's right. Pretty colored eyes. Yeah. Yeah. One amber and one blue. Yeah. Oh, really? You know yeah. that means something. Tell us. Oh. Oh, yeah. Back in the we'll call it medieval era, people that had two different colored eyes were often either labeled witch or a werewolf. By the way, oh, oh yeah. now that's the way to end the segment. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Excellent, you are man. So full of wow, I love this. I, I I tell you what, I look forward to this segment every week. You guys, it's oh. it's fantastic. You guys must be a lot of fun at a dinner. Yeah, party. yeah. I'm, it, <laughs> Really? You know we're so going to have to find that out soon. We're going to have to get yeah. together. Love it, guys. Well, thank thank you, man. Thank well, we you love so you guys. And, uh, we, we also look forward to this every week. Yeah, it's the best. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. don't forget, Friday, the costume party. That's right. Okay. Oh, we have arts for act. Right. But you know what? We may oh. Or maybe we may do it on a handful. It may not be the pretty office that you see here. That's okay. You know, right. if you're there, you're is there. It a virtual arts for act this year. Yes, it is, but we're going to like a there's a watch party, a, a satellite party. party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, awesome. uh, I got the Billy Dean last yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 uh, that's a, it's a great thing, and Jennifer Benton and that whole crew, they're just. Stephen uh, Blanchett's one of yeah. our best friends. Yeah, yeah. Stephen yeah. James, a, great friends of ours. So yeah, what a talented artist! My goodness, yeah, amazing oh, artist. We got to yeah. get him to do a wolf. And his yeah. cookie, man, his cookie yeah. is even like, whoa. So anyway, I've got oh, Andy knocking on the door. I'm going to let you guys go. Yeah. And thank you, uh, so thank you again Halloween. for a Happy Halloween. We'll see you happy. Friday at yeah, the party. We'll, yeah, so, just eat, you, you know, are you wearing yeah. costumes to the party? Um, it's, no, it's not a costume party. Actually, it's like black tie optional, if you can believe Yeah, it. we may be dressed up. That would be a costume for me, I'll tell you that. <laughs> you know, right? <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna hey we're gonna try to like represent you know yeah you gotta do okay, what you gotta well, do well you we'll know you're you always Monday. welcome and we'll look forward to next week and uh i will talk to you later you got it guys take care Good night. thank Bye. you guys lots of love Bye. Bye.